14 buttons, two rotary encoders and shifters that are somewhat arousing. It's the sim-gear.co.uk Suzuka MK1 3D printed button box which we've mounted to our Ultra Cento steering wheel. Now, sim-gear.co.uk sent us this button box to review a couple of weeks ago and after putting it through its paces, 15 hours streams of Project Cars 2, multiple races in the Seto Corsa and uh, just generally stroking it and caressing it when not driving in the simulator, this is our review of the button box. So in true Game of Muscle fashion, we're just going to jump straight into the positives and the not so positives with this button box and the most standout feature the uh, the aspect of this button box that i have enjoyed the most is the quality of the shifters on this button box and just how firm precise and hard they are to accidentally miss shift with and just how, how satisfying they are to click through the gears Every gear shift is like a firework going off. It's phenomenal. And the way that they've done this is by using two neodymium magnets on each shifter. So one on the back, one on the front, and then you've obviously got the actual button that it, that it actuates, which is quite a nice stiff clicky button. You can also perceive that it's clicking it, though it's most of the feel is coming from the magnets. But it's so hard to accidentally miss shift because you, you pull down it, you pull down it, pull down on it, and it's only once you get to the actual weight required that it, it goes like a dead full trap onto a mouse's head and you've actuated the gear. I really, really, if you've never used uh, magnet based shifters like this, and most of the top end solutions use these types of, this sort of configuration of uh, near doing magnet shifter. If you've never used one, you're missing out. I've, I've used lots of uh, consumer wheels like T300, um, TSPC Racer, T500, G25, um, and some other custom uh, wheels as well. None of them have felt as good as the shifters on this Suzuka MK1 button box. So to me, that is the absolute standout feature of this button box. And we've only just begun. Now we'll uh, contrast that standout feature with a negative. We'll, we'll go backwards and forwards here, like a ballet dancer dancing over a lava pit. A negative of this uh, MK1 button box uh, the most obvious negative has to be the fact that it's it is 3D printed. Now that has an advantage in that the price has gone down because of that, and it's not using ridiculous uh, materials for its application in sim racing. Where let's face it, we're, we're sat in a building here; it's not going in a real race car. But uh, what you do find with the 3D printing is that if you really care about the f the end finish of your button box, and you know you want something that looks really really swanky. At this point in time, or at least with this button box, you, you know, you're not going to get that. It, it is very clearly 3D printed. You can see there's imperfections in the 3D print. You can see the actual filament, uh, especially see it on the shifters there. You can see how the filament's gone in. It doesn't have that end finish that you get from button boxes that cost 500 to a thousand pounds and more. And uh, you also see that on the front side as well, where the buttons are, you know, personally, I quite like the, actual, the, the layout and design of it's fine, but you, you know, you can tell it just doesn't have that end material finish that you'd get from something made out of different materials. So uh, moving on from that negative, let's go to the, to the next positive. We're shuffling around here. The second positive after the shifters has to be We've got here 14 buttons. Uh, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The two rotary encoders have a button on them uh, and up and down switches here. So you've got 14 buttons and two rotary encoders and obviously your shifters, which I'm not including that button count. Um, for the price that they sell this at, the functionality that you get from this is insane. I've got to my side here a, uh, a secondary button box, a Derek Spears Race King button box, which is fantastic, by the way, really nice. But, I, having used this, let's get the camera right, having used this uh, sim gear button box, I haven't really had to use my other button box that much, bar features and functions of the car that I wouldn't be using all the time. With the amount of buttons that this has got on it, you can effectively do 
pretty much everything that you'd need to do in a car or you'd bind to a car, the typical options, um, even more so if you're using virtual reality because you don't need the look left and look right buttons, but it's got all the features that you would typically be changing on the fly in the car. And uh, the functionality is absolutely bang on the mark with this. So the functionality, the number of buttons for its price point, I have to say is an absolutely fantastic plus and another thing that this button box absolutely nails. Now let's jump back across to the negative side of the river and in terms of the actual end feel of some of the buttons, all these buttons down the bottom are absolutely superb and it's all really nice and firm. Uh, the, the rotary encoders feel really nice, they've got really nice finish to them, the actual button finish is really nice. But you do notice, and this is a, this is a rather sort of anally retentive complaint, but you do notice with these top buttons, when it's mounted on your rim, uh, if you're pushing them moderately hard, you do notice a tiny bit of flex in the sort of top of the button box. It, it's it, it's not really creaking, on, but you can you can feel that it's when you push the button, you can feel it does flex a tiny bit, which makes it feel a little bit uh, less solid. And maybe maybe the part of that's because of the 3D printing of it, or just the fact that they've crammed so many buttons onto such a small button box. But you do notice pushing this yellow and red button that there is a tiny bit of flex to the button box. Um, that is rather le rather ainly retentive to point that out. As I say, I think most people probably wouldn't care about that, but it is there, and we're you know we're covering everything here. Back to the positive side, the light side, the side where Luke Skywalker tends to hang out. Another positive is the modularity that this offers. In that, not only do you get a button box, which is a rather nice button box, but you'll notice here there's two there's two magnets up here. What could those additional magnets be for? Well, sim-gear.co.uk also sell this handy little screen, which you can stick on there with the magnets. And uh, there she goes. You've now got an LCD screen, Motec type display on your button box, which gives you the ability to see what gear you're in, the RPM, your fuel, your tire temperatures, everything that you could want from a little LCD screen on your steering wheel and it really does look the part when you're driving and it certainly adds to the immersion and the feel that you're in a car. Now obviously I tend to drive in virtual reality and I don't use a uh, triple screen setup at the moment I'm actually just using a single screen setup whilst I've been testing this and whilst we've been doing lots of streaming and if you're in VR typically you know you're not going to notice the screen because you, your eyes are covered up so for me, it's not the best of things, but if you do use a triple screen setup, having an LCD screen with the information on there, especially the fuel leftover, surprisingly, that's actually been quite useful, and it you know it calculates it on the fly. Having that there right in front of you is just really neat. It's just cool. <laughs> it's just it's just cool. Maybe maybe it's superfluous, but it's really cool. So it's nice that you can buy the button box first and you know just you could just have the button box not worry about it but if at a later date you wanted to get their screen that they do you can just stick it on the top now back to the dark side i would say when using the screen on the wheel you do have a downside in that if you're driving a car that requires uh, healthy degrees of opposite lock say like me you're driving the Clio Cup and you've just gone into that corner for the 10th time in a row too hot you've thrown it in you've got too hard on the brakes and the back of the car has indeed come out so far that uh, even a brick on the accelerator pedal is not going to bail it out with a good healthy amount of counter steer and um, you will find if you've got the screen on the wheel and you're in that situation that uh, You've got your wheel upside down here, you need to catch it. You'll probably let go of the rim unless you've got pro spaghetti hands and you'll find that the screen gets in the way of grabbing it if you tend to put your hands around the wheel. Now, if you grab it on the outside and <laughs> you hold your steering wheel like the Gran Turismo character, like this, all the way around, then no, it won't be a problem. But if you hold your steering wheel like any normal sane person does and you try and catch it, you'll find that the screen does get in the way. So. I find if I'm using the screen, it will only, and I've got it mounted on the wheel, I'll only use the screen with cars that don't require any more than, say, you know, I don't know what that is, like 
I don't know how many degrees of lock that is, but you get what I mean. It's only when you're at the point when you're driving cars where you typically do have to let go of the steering wheel and you, you're getting 360 degrees of rotation. In that case, I will then take the screen off and uh, use its funky magnets to mount it on the actual small mace. But it's actually quite happy sitting there. And due to the bulbous top of the Umtra Centre room, you can actually see the display through the, uh, the the hole that it's got anyway. So it's not not really not really a problem. But as I say, if you're going to mount your wheel, if you're going to mount the screen on the wheel itself, that is a consideration. And at times I have found that it does get rather cozy and tight in here if you don't hold the wheel in its designed place to be held. The Ultra Center has nice bevels to actually hold with your palm of your hand, which is really nice with a diet driver when you're, when you're driving higher torque cars because it encourages you to actually grip the wheel properly. Um, but you can sometimes find if you're moving your hand around that your little finger can sometimes get not, not caught or trapped, but you can feel it. You can sometimes end up rubbing on the edges of the button box and some of these nooks and crannies. So again, that's a little bit, um, it's a little bit anal retentive. I wouldn't say it's a massive problem, but you know, if you like that internal space for your fingers to do a little dance and uh, whatever your hands do on the inside of your steering wheel, that might be something to consider. It's not really bothered me, but I thought it was worth pointing out, especially when you put the screen on it. And lastly, before we finish off, other things I haven't mentioned, which are actually really quite cool. You've got the, uh, obviously got the bungee cord that's built into it, but they bundle the wheel, uh, the, the uh, button box with an extension cable. And that extension cable also comes with a additional neodymium magnet, which lets you, you can, if your sim rig's made out of steel, you can just stick it on there but you've got to be careful not to do it that hard because you might shatter the magnet. Um, but you can stick your magnet on your SIM rig there and then you put the extension cable across and you plug in the extension cable to, to, you know, to, your, to the actual um, button box cable and they, that holds it in place. And that keeps it in a perfect place on your rig. It also, if your rig's grounded, will then obviously ground the button box because it's now attached to your rig. Just, that's really nice that, it's in, that that's included in the packet at no extra cost. You also get the ability to adjust the uh, the shifters in that you can adjust the actual distance that the shifters come out, which obviously affects how uh, stiff they are to some extent. But you also get uh, the ability to adjust the throw of the shift shifters and the actuation point on them. And thrown in the packet as well, you get uh, two additional shifter um, paddles uh, that are different sizes these are the largest shifter paddles i've got on it that's just what i like but you get a medium one that's about that big and one that's like smaller obviously i'll show you that on the screen i don't know why i did that with my fingers so you know you just get all these little extras that you typically wouldn't expect for the price point that this is offered at and um i just it's just an absolutely fantastic piece of kit i couldn't be happier with it and uh, disclaimer Singear did send this to me for free but to be honest, having looked around on the market, I don't, I, I don't think there's anything that offers this functionality at this price, bar if you were to mod, say, like a Fanatec rim. Um, other than that, I don't think there's a cheaper solution. So <laughs> you can't really go wrong. It's probably what I would have ended up buying myself had they not given me one. But uh, there you go, guys. I hope I covered all the points of interest, everything that you want to know about this uh, this button box it is as i say mounted on the umtra Cento rim which you can buy off uh, amazon one of the main reasons why i got this umtra Cento rim was uh, partly because it's a it's a very common rim it's not hard to get a hold of it's also i, I keep calling it ump i know it's, it's omp but I, it really trolls people when i call it ump so i'll keep doing that <laughs> but <laughs> this the ump rim um just feels really nice it's got a really nice design at the top you've got the space there to be able to see your, your car dials which of course is relevant in a, in a sim rig it's just a good all-round rim they do it in plastic in leather and in alcantara so you've got plenty of options there but uh, as far as all-round wheels to stick on your direct drive wheel 300 millimeter Ultra Center with this bottom box. What a bloody fantastic solution. So thanks again to sim-gear.co.uk for sending us this button box to review. Absolutely awesome. We're going to keep using it. If you want to see footage of us using it and driving with it, just, just watch our streams and watch any of the videos we put out because we're going to be using this for the time being. 
and uh, there you go until the next one guys don't forget to uh, hit that likey button or dislike if you hate my face i don't blame you also subscribe and um, drop any questions in the comments let us know if you've got one of these and what you think i think it's really interesting for people to chime in that have bought these because that fills in any gaps that anyone might have uh, about the equipment or things i might have missed or you might particularly like it as well so uh, there you go guys thanks for watching and goodbye